We have just watched a financial meltdown in this country, the likes of which has not been seen in some time. Now, if people like credit default swaps, they are really going to like the carbon swaps that are going to occur and the carbon future swaps. We spent a full day in this committee last summer talking about the manipulation of the energy futures market in oil. We are going to create, I fear, another such system that uh, people who are, are, are have a, a, an inclination to react dishonestly to systems are, are going to actually have a, a new opportunity. Is that not a problem? A select group of central banks are lobbying for the same legislation to be passed worldwide. Once the so-called green economy laws are in place, only global megacorporations and their subsidiaries will be allowed to do business. Van Jones, Barack Obama's first green job czar, has stated repeatedly on the record that the new green economy is only a cover for a complete revolution against capitalism and the total redistribution of wealth. But what Van Jones doesn't tell his sad followers is that the elite are bragging that the modern green movement was designed from its creation to destroy the middle class and transfer all wealth into the hands of a super elite. They're not doing this to uplift the poor. No, the goal is to enslave the planet and usher in a new dark age. Every nation on Earth is in the process of, or has already passed, its own set of carbon tax laws and regulations. If their plan is successful, every nation on Earth will not only pay tribute to the powerful world government, but every facet of human life will be regulated by the technocratic global planners. Under the carbon tax scheme, China, India, Mexico, and over 150 other nations are exempt from the global tax system. You see, the bankers already own and control the third world. Their final target is the middle class of the West. Once they've dismantled the economies of the United States, Europe, and Japan, they believe no one can stand in their way. In short, the New World Order is a global corporate takeover. In their global corporate state, there is no room for individuality, sovereignty, or independence. As their program begins to face more and more opposition, lawmakers and supporters of the man-made global warming hypothesis want laws to be passed, making it illegal to question their theories. Recently, the head of Greenpeace was forced to admit that the Arctic and Antarctic ice caps grow in the winter and shrink in the summer, and that this is all part of a natural process driven by the tilt of the Earth and the Sun. The cosmic radiation coming from space, the amount reaching the Earth is affected by the strength of the Sun's magnetic field. So the magnetic field of the Sun is almost like a, a gateway controlling the cosmic radiation reaching the Earth. The magnetic strength of the Sun is also related to the number of sunspots. So they are, are directly related to changes within the inner structure of the Sun. The amount of cosmic radiation reaching the lower atmosphere creates more cloud, right? And, and cloud forms, you need to have what are called condensation nuclei. That is, little particles around which water can change from water vapor gas into water droplets, minute particles that are visible in the form of clouds. We've known for a long time that there was more cloud than the amount of particles in the atmosphere, because we assumed it was clay particles and salt particles that were creating this condensation process. Um, but there was this gap. We now realize, of course, it's the cosmic radiation that's doing it. So what the cosmic radiation is doing, controlled by the magnetic field of the sun, is putting up, a, it's like putting up a screen in the greenhouse and blocking out the sunlight. And, and of course, that then affects the temperature of the Earth. That's why there's a relationship between the sunspots and the temperature on the Earth. So we now know the mechanism, but they completely ignore that. More than 31,000 scientists from across the United States, including more than 9,000 PhDs from the fields of climatology, atmospheric science, earth science, and hydrology, signed a petition rejecting man-made global warming as a scientific fraud. This shattered the hoax of the so-called consensus that the mainstream media had been pushing for years, 
that every scientist on Earth believed that man-made global warming was a fact. If the people are able to block their carbon tax takeover, the elite's agenda to establish a planetary world government will collapse. To force their unpopular agenda upon the planet, the controllers are racing to complete the construction of their police state control grid. Borrowing from tactics used in the past by communist, fascist, and other totalitarian regimes, every form of classical textbook tyranny is now being implemented in the West. In the United States, the central government is federalizing local police. State and local officers are in a great position to collect important information on terrorists and their allies. And the Terrorist Screening Center stands ready to help you. This video, produced by Homeland Security, is required viewing for all departments in the U.S. And with the teamwork of local, state, and federal law enforcement, we have an excellent opportunity to see the picture and solve the puzzle before these terrorists can strike again. State, county, and city police now take their marching orders directly from DHS and FEMA. The videos and training manuals turn peace officers, once guardians of the Republic, into secret police. See way down there? There's a woman taking photos of the dam. Someone called 911 and reported a suspicious person. As you guessed, she's gonna be a category three hit. And since it's very important that we don't let her know that we know, both the dispatcher and the officer need to make sure she doesn't hear the radio traffic. Stand by. If I could ask you to wait right here, please. Sure. Everyday items and activities are listed as proof that you are sympathizing with shadowy boogeymen of terror. Of course, he's going to keep his eyes open for anything interesting or unusual in the car. That would include cameras, binoculars, video equipment, GPS, maybe things like sleeping bags that suggest they're living out of the car. From their inception, Homeland Security and Northcom were set up to dominate the people and the states, not to fight the CIA-created Al-Qaeda. Patriotic members of the military and law enforcement, at great risk to their lives and careers, have sent this filmmaker federally and internationally produced law enforcement manuals, textbooks, documents, and videos. The MIAC report, distributed to Missouri law enforcement, lists gun owners, libertarians, constitutionalists as potential terrorists. The federally written document went on to list Ron Paul, Bob Barr, and American flag bumper stickers as dangerous paraphernalia linked to white supremacists. Even before 9-11, FEMA was quietly indoctrinating local police to have a hatred of the Founding Fathers and everything our Constitutional Republic stands for. Who was the first terrorist organization in the United States? <clears throat> Who? Founding Fathers. Yeah. Founding Fathers. You mean Thomas Jefferson? Oh, yeah. You mean uh, George Washington? Oh, yeah. Paul Revere? Yeah. These guys right here, let me ask you something. Did they try to scare people? <laughs> Yeah. They tried to intimidate the British. Did they try to did they use acts of violence? Your founding fathers, my founding fathers, were involved in acts of terrorism against British officials because they systematically had British officials assassinated. Assassinated. In the old Soviet Union, Nazi Germany, and Maoist China, the police main job was not fighting crime. In totalitarian forms of government, the police are political enforcers or commissars, as they were known in Russia. It's their job to spy on the public and to intimidate the exercise of free speech. Once a climate of fear has been achieved, the public begins to self-censor, to shut down. Once the people have been intimidated to withdraw from the field of intellectual battle, the tyrants have a free hand to expand their oppression and looting of the helpless serfs. The average man and woman is in a trance. They get home from work, they don't even talk to their children, they turn the television on, and they let those corporate messages set the agenda in their lives. 